And welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. It's Keith once again, and today we're going to have a bit of a breakdown on Ryzen 3000 series Zen 2 CPU layout, a little bit of information about how the cores and the CCXs are arranged on these new chips because I see a bit of confusion and I did have a little bit of clarity from Robert Halleck over on Twitter a while back and I started sprinkling it in with articles and videos but figured this deserves a quick tutorial to help people out who are a little bit confused on the structure. Now if you already know it, that's fine, that's great, this video is not for you. So let the people who don't understand it and maybe maybe are a little bit confused maybe they'll they'll learn a little bit and we'll just have a little bit of an educational day so what we got on screen is the Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000 series now this is the total package this is with both chiplets in place but this is the full so this is gonna be like the Ryzen 9 series CPUs but what you've got here is three chips on here which one is a 12 nanometer IO die the other two are 7 nanometer 8 core chiplet designs. Now the IO die handles the memory controller, all of that kind of stuff. So PCI Express lanes, the works is handled on the IO die. And then you have the two 8 core chiplets that are comprised of two CCXs each. So you have two 4 core CCXs on each chiplet all connected via the an infinity fabric. So that's what this shows here. That's to kind of, you know, help break that down a little bit better. So both chiplets are the same and there are two sets of them and you can see the darker red line indicates the separation between the CCXs. So let's start things off with Ryzen 9. So Ryzen 9 is including the 12 and the 16 core. Now that is actually going to feature both chiplets in full effect. And what we've got right now is the Ryzen 9 3950X. So you can see here all 16 cores are enabled and showing that's what each little red square each little red outline square rather is just representing a core that's not exactly how the cores look inside the chiplets but this is a representation of how they look so fully enabled across the deck moving into the Ryzen 9 at 3900x you can see there are one core disabled per CCX bringing it down to three cores on each CCX for a total of 12 cores across the entire package. And it's still using both packages, so both chiplets are still in place. However, there are four total CPU cores deactivated. Now, you could move those around. It really doesn't have to look exactly like that, but this is, again, a visual representation. Press F for respect. Moving into the Ryzen 7 series, moving down the stack, things change up a little bit. The chip the chip actually looks like what they showed back at CES where you had a single chiplet in place the other one is completely gone there's no need for the dummy die or anything it's just it's not there so this is what you get there it's the 12 nanometer IO die and one 7 nanometer chiplet and the Ryzen 7 has all cores active on that chiplet so all eight cores are fully active makes sense no need for a second chiplet you're not gonna have four core or two cores per CCX active would that be yes two cores per CCX active across two chiplets because then you have a really wild design as far as latency for unnecessary reasons and this is the package that makes most sense so of course AMD would do it this way moving things down to Ryzen 5 we see one core disabled per CCX so you still have two CCX's the two the single chiplet design and you end up with just a big old F there. Uh, now again it could look any other way the you can move that black those black boxes around since they represent inactive cores but either way you get six cores 12 threads on that design. So hopefully that helped explain some things a little bit better for people who were a little bit confused maybe on how they were laid out. It's again the cores could move around whenever they're bending them. It could be the first core on the CCX, could be the second, could be the third, could be the fourth. It doesn't have to be any particular one, but this is a general visual representation of what's going on and how it's breaking down from the Ryzen 9 all the way down to the Ryzen 5 and hopefully shedding a little bit of light on that topic. So is this different than what you expected? Is this right on the money with what you expected? I know there hasn't been a lot of discussion about this, but just wanted to have a little bit of an educational moment here with this. Hopefully it, you know, again, 
shed some light. Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Are you picking up a Ryzen 3000 series CPU? Are you pre-ordering or are you waiting for reviews? This seems to be the question of the hour, and I'd love to hear your take on it down there in the comment section. Either way, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you and the next one.